Hello guys, Isaac Frank here and welcome to another video on the Solidity tutorial series. In this video, we'll talk about variables, the data types of a variable and the variable scope. Just like any other program you write, you'll need variables to store various information. Variables are nothing but a reserved memory location to store values. You may like to store variables of different data types, like you might like to store characters, white floating points, boolean, and so on. So, firstly, I'll list some data types that Solidity has to offer. So, I'll create a new contract. I'm using the Remix IDE. Uh, let's call this variables. So, first thing that I have to set my compiler and get 0 0.6 points eight I don't know if I'm right let's see 0 0.6 point eight here let me just add this I create a contract Okay. Now we'll list some basic data types of the Solidity compiler. The first here on my list is the integer. And this you can have the assigned integer and the unsigned integer. This can be declared like so. Um, just name this signed. And this creates a signed integer. We also have the unsigned integer, which is declared like so. Do int Then also we have the um, integer that is signed int from eight bits to eight uh, to two hundred and fifty six bits. This is declared like so. As you can see over here, they are listed. Oh shit! As you can see over here, they are listed. These are all integers starting from the 8 bits up to the 256 bits. These are all of it. And also we have the unsigned integer, which is the same 8 bit to 256 bits, as you can see also here. Then we have the string data type. So declare a string in Solidity, and which is done with a string, which is done with a string variable, with a string keyword, sorry. And um, I clear an in here. Then also we have the boolean. This is um this is a variable that ha that holds just two values, either a true or false value, and this can be initialized by using the bool keyword. So we can do so. And if you know, um, what am I missing? Oh, sorry, I spelled false wrong. Okay, as you can see here, it takes a true, it can also take a true, it takes a false. It can also take a true variable, a true value. But if you try passing in any other value in here, you get a compiler error because um, it can be converted to a type of bool and um, it accepts just two variables, a true or a false value. We have also another one, the address data type. And this is mainly in Solidity. I'm not sure there's any variable like this in other languages. This holds a 20 byte value representing the size of an Ethereum address. An address can be used to get the balance or transfer funds to into the accounts. So I'll create an address value variable here. Uh, let me go to my deploy tab. And over here, as you can see, these are addresses. I'll copy the first one. Then I'll create a variable. Like this, I don't think you have to put it in a string. I think it works in a string, okay. As you can see here, I created an address, I, I created a variable named my address of type address. 
so this address this variable now has those functions it has the um, it has the transfer function it also it also have the uh, balance function as well as I have record let me see add 12 what the hell did I misspell transfer transfer oh sorry I misspelled it that's basically the address and um if I forgot to mention in my last video Solidity also supports the C style comments which is done using the double stroke and writing the words as you can see in this place this this will show in our smart contract this is a comment just to tell the developer what you're doing and it also supports multi-line comments which is done like so so in here you have a multi-line comment As you can see, you can keep writing comments down. Why this is just for a single comment. Now we'll go into types of a variable. Um, there are three types of a variable. First, let me clear this. We have the state variable. We have the um, local variables. And we have the global variables. Um, what is the state variable? A state variable are variables whose value are permanently stored on a contract storage. So if after creating this contract, I define a variable over here. This is a state variable. Throughout this contract's life, if this variable won't be deleted, it won't stop. It's always there. It's stored on the contract memory. So whenever you call this contract, this variable is always available for you to pull out. Then coming to the local variable, the local variable are variables whose values are present until a function stop is executed. So for example, let me show you an, a local variable. I'll create some function here and then this local okay. and then I'll just make this public. Okay, then I find a variable here. Mm, this variable what am I missing again? Oh We'll talk about storage in future videos, but in the other version, you could just declare a variable without this. But um, let me just add a view, I guess, in the view, up here, and then okay. As you can see, it's being called a local variable because this variable only exists once it, whenever this function is called. So, once ever this function stop executing, this variable is gone. So, that's what a local variable is. Then next we'll talk about the global variables. These are variables, these are special variables that exist in the global net space used to get information about the blockchain. Uh, these variables uh, consist of the following. We have the block hash, which returns the numbers of blocks, I guess. And um, we have the block gas limit, gas left. We have all this in this video. We'll focus just on um, a few, like the now, the um, the message, the sender, the message, the value, msg, the value, the msg, the data, and so on. So the now keyword is used to get the current time of the place on the blockchain so it gets the current time the message you send there is whoever caused this value also there's also um, another one called the tx.origin 
the message of sender is whoever calls this value ethereum are being signed by account so if i'm to deploy this account this particular address is a message of sender it's the sender of this particular account so if i call this function whatever account i use in calling this function that is a message the sender that this function will get then we have the value the value is when you want to send let's say you want to send an ethereum to this smart contract over here you can put in the value when using remix id you can put in the value 9 and will just a currency that is i don't know one term divided into a hundred thousand or so so you can choose your currency over here and once you deploy this contract it will send nine ether to the contract and although we don't have a catch to catch the ether which means the ether will be gone but it will send nine ether to this contract which comes in in the message of value and then we have the message of data this is just the data it returns about the particular transaction and then we have the tx.origin this is the transaction.origin this is the original sender that starts the transaction for example let me show you something if i'm to store okay let's see i have to store the okay let me just leave this here i'll clear this function like this okay let's say i'm to store a variable um this is a type address and this is a type address this is a type integer so this is our story variable let's just call this type address i call this sender and um equal to i'll call this origin and then cross to the Then I'll create two functions oh, oh, I should just make this public Once you make a variable public, it automatically generates getter functions So if I'm to make this like this is here, public Public Okay, if I come to deploy this contract, I'll just clear this over. If I deploy this contract, then here, when you show the deploy contract, as you can see, the origin returns an address that ends in AF. The sender returns an address, same address. So you might be thinking, what's the difference between these two keywords? The difference between the MSG sender and the TX origin is that the MSG sender can be a contract, the TX origin can never be a contract. The MS origin, okay, I'll just, I'm recording this after the video because I thought my explanation wasn't good and um, let's open this back. So let's say we have um, contract A. So let's say we have um okay, I um, let's say I deploy this contract and um I am the uh, I am the sender and I'm also the origin because I'm the one who deployed the contract and I'm the one who sent the request. So I'm the sender and the origin. Then let's say I create another contract to interact with this contract and we call this contract A then I called contract A, which called this contract. This contract. So what happens here is I am the origin. Origin can never be a contract. I am the origin because I'm the one who signed. Um, I'm the one who signed the transaction, and this contract is the sender. So to this contract, I am the sender. But to this contract. This con to this contract, this is the sender, so, but to this contract, I am the origin. So, even if they keep calling other contracts, uh, next contract, next, so all this contract is a chain. So, to all this contract, the origin will forever be me. 
it, it won't change it again but the contract now the sender can change the sender can be this the sender can be this the sender can be this if this goes out so the sender is now this and just like that the sender is the last contract or address to sign a, a transaction while the origin is the very first contract to sign the transaction sorry not contract the very first address origin can never be a contract it's always an address the very first address to send the transaction while message or sender is the last contract or address to send the transaction so that is it for the end the origin and the sender next year we are going to look at variable scope I talked about local variables uh, at the beginning of this video, I guess. Local variables are limited to function in which they are defined. Remember, local variables are variables declared inside um, a function. Their life cycle dies when the function stops being executed. So they are limited to function that function, which means there are some visibility you can set for them. But state variable, which is declared outside any function, have three types of scope. They have the public scope. They have and so they have the public scope they have the internal scope and they have the um, private scope so what really is a public scope a public scope is a state variable it can be accessed internally it can be accessed outside the smart contract and um, it has an automatic getter for it for example I'll create a variable And I'll call this. I'll call this. Okay, just assign here to it. If I'm to deploy this contract, I need to make this public. Sorry, it should be public by default, but I just need to make this public. So if I'm to deploy this contract, and you check it down here, it automatically creates a getter functions for this variable because it's a public variable. So if I click on if I click on it, I get the value I input here. So that's it for a public variable, a public scope. So next is the internal scope. The internal state variables can be accessed only internally from the current contract or contract that inherits from this contract. Don't worry, we'll talk about inheritance in future videos. So internal, if I create, if I make this an internal video. The only way to get this outside is to create a function that gets int. I just call this like this. And um, it's public returns string and return variable. So if I'm to deploy this contract again, from right here, oh, I need a single word. Over here, you see it gets int that it returns the internal variable. So this variable can be accessed from outside. You have to create or get a, an setter function to manipulate this variable. This variable can just work internally. So when this contract plus other contracts that inherit from this contract, that's for internal variables. And the last here is the private variable, which can be done like this. The pri private variable, it's, it's the same thing with the internal variable, except in the private variable, even inherited, even contracts that inherit from this contract don't have access to this private variable. Um, don't get this wrong, if you are to store any important file, any important information in your variable, the private variable isn't the way to go about this. You have to use um, a hash to hash your variables, your hash your values, because the private variable is only private in the smart contract, but it can be manipulated, it can be gotten. Ethereum is just open source, so Ethereum is really open to everything. I can get a private variable from a smart contract, so private variable is not for security, it's just for contracts this private variable can this sample also works for the variable but inherited 
contract contract that inherits or i'll call this shared contract shared contracts don't have access to this variable this variable is private to only this particular contract so next we'll talk about i'll give you some tips on how to name your variables in solidity the name convention is solidity um <coughs> um so when keeping variables in solidity there are some naming convention there are some rules you should follow and you should keep in mind number one is do not use any of the solidity reserve keyword um, just imagine creating of a variable and naming this if throws an error because this is a reserve keyword to check conditions and you can use it as a variable name you have to use something unique something you can remember something simple and um, other reserve keywords are the break the continue the contract as you can see here all these are reserve keyword you should make use of when creating a variable the rule number two variable name should not start with the um, number the variable's name can start with a number for example i can't just name this that's a four h this was an error because illegal string this can be a variable name if you really need to define a variable it's a number you can either put it at the end of a variable or add an underscore like i did here to the beginning of the variable so this clears the error for you. Also, another thing you should know about variables is that variables are case sensitive, which means if I'm to create a variable over here, notice I use a caps n over here, an uppercase n over here. If I try assessing it here with like so, with a lower m, as you can see, variable doesn't exist um, because these are case sensitive whatever you name it should be water at the same way you assess the variable but if i to change this to n as you can see the error is gone so that's it on this video guys in the next video we'll talk about loops and logical operation maybe thank you guys for watching and please like this video also subscribe to my channel and turn on post notification to stay notified and also to help me um do more content and upload more videos regularly have a nice day.